Welcome back again everyone. This is now part 9 in this series of presentations from Romans chapter 9. Now I don't want to waste too much time because I'd like to get on with it. But in our last presentation in part 8, we were able to clearly show that the Gentiles to who to whom Paul was referring to in Romans chapter 9 were in fact the cast off people of the house of Israel. Now if you're not certain about that point, please go back and listen to part 8 again. Please go and read Romans chapter 9 and read at least Hosea chapter 1 and chapter 2. I want to pick up and continue on this thought to demonstrate that the Gentiles that Paul is referring to in Romans are in fact the cast off people of the house of Israel. So let's go on and continue reading. In Hosea 1 verse 9 it says, Then said God, Call his name Loemi, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. The name Loemi, one of the sons of Hosea, his name means not a people. That is the name given to the house of Israel. We have another witness in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 8 where it says Ephraim. Now the name Ephraim is simply another name for the house of Israel. Ephraim shall be broken that it be not a people. It is the same word loemi, not a people. In Isaiah 65 verses 1 to 2 it says, I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, Behold me, behold me, a nation that was not called by my name. Who is that referring to? Well, all we need do now is go back to the prophets. As one preacher has said, Let the prophets into the pulpit. Let the prophets in. We go back and we listen to what the prophets are saying. The prophets are prophesying concerning the identity of a people, Israel, who became not a people. They are the people that Paul is referring to in Romans chapter 9. If we were to read Romans 9 verse 24 in some of the other modern translations. Now i got to admit I am somewhat sceptical of the modern translations. They are based on questionable manuscripts. But for interest I'll just read them. In the Amplified Bible Romans 9 verse 24 says even including ourselves whom he has called not only from among the Jews, but also from among the Gentiles or heathen. In the Amplified, it talks about people from among the Gentiles. In Young's literal translation, Romans 9 verse 24 says, not only out of Jews, but also out of nations. Remember the word ethnos, the Greek word ethnos, which comes through to us most commonly in the New Testament as Gentiles, but it simply means nations. And so the word ethnos is translated, translated as nations many times in our KJV. Here, the Young's literal translation just simply says the nations, not referring to Gentiles at all. In the American, Stat American Standard Version, it says even us whom he also called not from the Jews only, but also from the Gentiles. Again, the Amplified and the American Standard Version are similar. They, tra they translate the words as referring to people from among the Gentiles as opposed to the Gentiles themselves. But be that as it may, th this only is of a point of interest. Be that as it may, Paul has already gone on and clarified that those people that he's referring to that are among the Gentiles, 
were in fact the house of Israel called not a people. It's important that we understand our Old Testament to realise what God had done when he divorced the house of Israel. In Zechariah 10 verse 9 it says, I will sow them among the people. That is to say, they would Israel would be cast out among the heathen Gentile nations. Micah 5 verses 6 to 7, And the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people, and the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many people. Remember, we just read that some of those modern translations referred to a people among the Gentiles. Well, that's not inconsistent with what the Bible says, for it does say in, in Micah chapter 5, the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many people. By the way, we need to also remember that while they were among the Gentiles, they were not called Israel. They became known as Loami. The fact of the matter is, they became as the Gentiles. Jeremiah 9 verse 16 says, I will scatter them also among the heathen, whom neither they nor their fathers have known. In Amos 9 verse 1, For lo, I will command, and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a sieve. So Israel was sown into the earth. The Lord God brought an end to the kingdom of Israel, but thank God, his eternal plan and purposes meant that he didn't bring the house of Israel to an end. In other words, God didn't bring the people of the kingdom to an end. He cast them off. He cast them off and he sowed them among the Gentiles. Ezekiel 34 verse 12 says, As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day, that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so I will seek out my sheep, and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. Here, the prophet Ezekiel is referring to the house of Israel as sheep that are scattered. By the way, the prophet is still referring to the, the people that are scattered as sheep. And it's, we do well to remember that Jesus came as the great shepherd of the sheep to seek and to save the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What is that referring to? It's referring to what Ezekiel was, is speaking about in verse 34. Israel, cast off as sheep that are scattered. In Zechariah 34 verse 6, My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth and none did search or seek after them. Thank God Christ came to seek and to save that which was lost. For the thing that was lost was Israel. The sheep scattered through the earth. Scattered and driven out in under the corrective hand of the Lord God Almighty. On every high hill a flock upon the face of the earth. None did seek or search after them, but one came on a mercy mission to seek his brethren where they were, as Joseph of old was sent by his father to seek and to find out where his brethren were. So Jesus came. Bless the Lord. Ezekiel 37 verse 21. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. You see, Israel was sown into the heathen nations. Israel became as the Gentiles. Israel became lost to men and lost to themselves, but not lost to God. And God was going to preserve them. God was going to move them, sift them like corn in a sieve, and not the least of them would be lost. 
Now, many of us don't believe that that has happened, but it has happened. The whole course of Western civilization is due to these facts. And that takes a great deal of time to explain, but we are dealing with tremendous things here, marvelous truth from the Word of God, uh, which is just uh, just it's so stimulating to the mind to think of the wondrous things that God has done for his people and is still doing for his people under this very day and it's it hasn't yet reached its climax but it will and I hope and pray that I'll be part of that Now in John chapter 7, we have something very striking and interesting for us to consider uh, that dovetails in with this topic that we are referring to in identifying these Gentiles of Romans chapter 9. In John 7 verse 34, it says, Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me, and where I am, thither ye cannot come. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go, that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed, among the Gentiles, and teach the Gentiles? Now, in many modern translations, that word Gentiles here is rendered as, in the English as Greek. It is the, the Greek word Helen, and comes across to us in most modern translations as the word Greek. And in other places, in the KJV, Helen is, in fact, uh, translated as Greek. For whatever reason, it comes through to us as the word Gentiles here. Now, what, what is striking about what the Jews are saying is that they say, will he go to the dispersed among the Gentiles? Now, this word dispersed is the Greek word diaspora. Well, it's, it, it's in our we say it in the English, diaspora or diaspora, that is, the Jews are referring to the dispersed Israelites of the house of Israel. The dispersed of the house of Israel had become as the Gentiles. They certainly were not called Israel anymore because that was a marital name which the Lord took off them when he divorced them and he sowed them into the earth. He scattered them among the nations. And they were beyond the great river Euphrates at that time. Jesus knew where they were. The Jews certainly knew where they were. Many historians write about where these people were, including uh, uh, Josephus, among others. They are referring to a group of Gentiles among the Gentiles who were the dispersed. So there are two groups of Gentiles. There are the Gentiles in general, and then there are the dispersed among the Gentiles, who were also known as Gentiles. And it is clear that it is clear to me and to many others that this must be a reference to the lost sheep of the house of Israel who were known as Gentiles. And this fits in beautifully with what Paul is saying in Romans chapter 9, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Because although the Lord had cast them away, they were not out of the mind of the Lord, and they were certainly not out of his plan and purpose concerning the bringing back in of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But I want to go on and just read a little bit more about this Greek word Helen, and this should be most instructive to us. In Thayer's lexicon, it talks about the Greek word Helen here, and it says the word means a Greek by nationality, whether a native of the mainland or of the Greek islands or colonies. In a wider sense, the name embraces all nations, not Jews, doesn't say not Israelites, but not Jews that made the language, customs and learning of the Greeks their own. 
so that where Helen is used opposed to the Jews, the primary reference is to a difference of religion or worship. Note what Thayer is saying here, that the word Helen can denote those who are Greeks by custom. Now, it may refer to a Greek by nationality. In a wider sense, it can also speak to those who are Greeks by custom. Now, this should start to ring a few bells in our minds, I hope, as I'll go on and point out in the next slide. Let's read John 12, verse 20. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. This word Greek, it, this word in the English Greeks is in the Greek Helen, which we just saw before in John 7 was translated as Gentiles, but now comes through to us in John 12 as the word Greek. There came up certain Greeks to worship at the feast. The same therefore came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Now, let me ask you this question. Why would Greek nationals, those who were Greek by race, come up to worship at the Feast of Israel? Why would they be observing the Feast of Israel? Wouldn't it make a lot more sense if these Greeks were Greeks by culture and custom? As we just read before in Thayer's lexicon, in a wider sense, the word Helen refers to those who made the custom and culture of the Greeks their own. That would make a lot of sense because the, it is an historical fact that the pervading culture of the Roman Empire was Greek. And that stemmed from the fact that the Roman Empire followed along in suit from the Grecian Empire, and the Roman Empire merely assimilated the Grecian culture into their own. So it would be no surprise to us, and it would be entirely consistent with the message of the Bible, that these Greeks that came up to keep the Feast of Israel were in fact of the lot, uh, were in fact of the house of Israel, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, who were not known as Israelites anymore because that was a marital name that had been taken from them. They had made the, the uh, culture and custom of the Greeks their own, and therefore they could be rightly designated as Greeks. It was the lost sheep of the house of Israel that were coming up to worship at the feast that were inquiring after Jesus. It's just, it's just obvious that these Greeks do not have to be Greeks by nationality. It's much more likely that these Greeks are the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That is entirely consistent with the message of the prophets wherein God had sown Israel into the earth. They had lost their marital name Israel. They had become as the heathen nations. They had become, in this case, the heathen nations that they had become like was the Greeks. And uh, this is very consistent with God's dealings with Israel and the fact that Jesus came to seek and to find that which was lost. And the Bible does declare, No man can come under me except he is drawn. And what was happening here? These certain Greeks were being drawn unto Jesus. Israel had become as the Gentiles. Let's go on. In 1 Corinthians 10 verse 1, we read, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Note what Paul is saying here to the Corinthians. He's saying all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. 
Now, whose fathers were under the cloud? Whose fathers had passed through the sea? Whose fathers were all baptized under Moses in the cloud and in the sea? Well, it was only the fathers of Israel. Note then, if we go across two chapters to 1 Corinthians 12, verse 2, Paul says to these same people, ye know that ye were Gentiles. That's the Greek word ethnos. Ye were Gentiles carried away under these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Now, that's the story of the house of Israel. All their fathers had come up out of Egypt, but they had become as Gentiles, carried away under these dumb idols. That is the story and the history of the house of Israel. Now, somebody could argue that where Paul is talking in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 1, that Paul is merely speaking to the Corinthians about the Jewish fathers or just the fathers of Israel, and somebody could say, could argue that, well, Paul is not saying to the Corinthians that, that our fathers were their fathers. In other words, as people read this, they believe strongly that Paul is speaking to Greeks by nationality, and he's merely referring to the fathers of Israel as an example. Now, that is a possibility. But it is also a possibility... A very, very strong possibility, and it makes a great deal of sense if these Gentiles were the lost sheep of the house of Israel because they were known as Gentiles and they were carried away unto the dumb idols of the heathen nations round about them. It's all through the Old Testament. Read it and it makes a great deal of sense. And as we dovetail in the scriptures, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, with what we read from John chapter 7 and in other passages from John, with what we're understanding from Romans chapter 9, that these Gentiles that Paul was speaking to are in the main the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The fact of the matter is that the Gentiles of Romans chapter 9 are the not a people of Hosea chapter 1. They are the not beloved of the book of Hosea and it is a clear and unambiguous reference to the dispersed house of Israel. If you're not convinced, please read the book of Hosea carefully and compare it back with what Paul says in Romans chapter 9, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, and let the scriptures interpret themselves, and all will become clear. There is a second definition given in Romans chapter 9 concerning the identity of these people, these Gentiles, we read on in Romans 9, verse 27, Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved, for he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. Well, it's very clear that when Paul cites Isaiah, Isaiah is talking concerning Israel. But let's go on and read a little bit more. Let me ask you another question before I go any further. When was the last time any of us who read Romans chapter 9 verse 27 actually went back to Isaiah to see what Paul was saying, to see what Paul was quoting from in Isaiah? Why is it that when we read the New Testament, and we read the quotes from the prophets, we don't go back to the foundation to check out what the New Testament is being built on. We just don't use the instruction manual that's given to us. We already decide in our minds 
what the scripture means and we don't go back to see what the prophet said. We don't go back to see to whom the prophet spoke. The result is, unfortunately, we get a faulty theology. We get understanding that is based on tradition or the doctrines of men or based on our own carnal understanding and we miss the beauty of the unfolding plan and purpose of God. So, let's go back to Isaiah and see what Paul, what analogy Paul was bringing forward to us. Paul is quoting from Isaiah chapter 10. We start in verse 1. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees, that write grievousness which they have prescribed. Verse 5, O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger, and the staff in their hand is my indignation. I will send him against a hypocritical nation, and against the people of my wrath will I give him a charge, to take the spoil, and to take the prey, and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. Verse 10, As my hand hath found the kingdoms of the idols, and whose graven images did excel them of Jerusalem and of Samaria, shall I not as I have done unto Samaria and her idols, so do to Jerusalem and her idols. In Isaiah 10 verse 20, And it shall come to pass in the day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but they shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. The remnant shall return even the remnant of Jacob unto the mighty God. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. It's very clear, it's totally unambiguous, that when, when Paul was speaking in Romans 9 verse 27, and he's citing what Isaiah has declared in Isaiah chapter 10, that Isaiah is prophesying concerning the house of Israel and bringing forward one of the great truths that are in the book of Isaiah concerning a remnant. Because the thought of a remnant runs very strongly through the book of Isaiah, and it is a remnant from the house of Israel. Isaiah is speaking to Israel. Isaiah is prophesying concerning their future. And this is what Paul is picking up on. Not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. And then he refers to a remnant of Israel that shall return. So it's very clear that the second witness, the second definition that we are given in the book of Romans chapter 9 concerning these Gentiles who are set over against the Jews are in fact ten tribe Israel, specifically the remnant of Jacob, thy people Israel. It's Israel whatever way you look at it, only that we need to understand what happened to Israel of old? They had become as the Gentiles, cast off, but not forsaken, out of sight, but not out of mind. And God, through Calvary, through the death, burial, burying, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and through the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, was bringing the two sticks together Again, and we're going to talk about more of that later as we move on in the book of Romans. Romans 9 verse 29 says, And as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Seboeth had left us a seed, we had been as Sodoma and been, like, been made like unto Gomorrah. And that's a quote from Isaiah 1 verse 9. Except the Lord of hosts have left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. And Paul is picking up again on this theme from Isaiah about a remnant that was going to be called out. 
a remnant according to the election of grace that would be saved. Because as we read before, and I hope you remember, that they are not all Israel which are of Israel. The Israel that God has called forward out of the Gentiles is the remnant of the house of Israel that God has elected unto salvation. I'd like to ask another question here. Why is it not so obvious who the Gentiles are? If the Gentiles are, in fact, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, as I've gone to some pains and length to demonstrate, why isn't it more obvious that these Gentiles are the lost sheep of the house of Israel? Well, I have a couple of suggestions. Firstly, one of the big obstacles we have to get over is that we think we already know who the Gentiles are. Therefore, we may not be open to be taught anything new later on. As they say of, of old dogs, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. And unfortunately, we, as a rule, most of us have a deeply entrenched mindset that we know who the Gentiles are, and then when it comes apparent that there's more to the Gentiles than meets the eye, that these Gentiles that have been set over against and contrasted with the Jews are in fact the house of Israel which had become as the Gentiles, it can be really difficult to change our mindset. In fact, some of us, some people listening, may simply not accept it because it's too foreign to their thinking. Well, I hope that you're open to be taught. I hope that you're open to hear new things. I hope that your mind doesn't close down simply because it's not what you've been taught in the past. We all have to realise <coughs> that there is much more to the Word of God than most of us have been taught. As I said earlier on, I thought... I knew a great deal about the Bible, I've come to realise I didn't know near as much as I thought I knew. And in many cases I had to press the reset button and learn things anew. And I feel that I'm still very much in my infancy on many of these things. There's so much for me to learn. And that is why I think it's not so obvious who the Gentiles are because we have a mindset that is contrary to what the Word of God is saying. Another reason why it's not so obvious who the Gentiles are is this. We'll read in Ephesians 3 verse 1. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles... If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, would, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when you read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy prophets and prof holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Verse 6, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs, fellow heirs, I'm sorry, and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. And therein is another reason why it's not so obvious who the Gentiles are, because it's a mystery. So it's not a mystery that can't be unraveled, it's not a mystery that can never be understood, but it's not apparent on first reading, is it? It has pleased God to cover it over a little. It has pleased God to unfold his plan and purpose in a way that's not so obvious. It's not so obvious to the world, but people who 
hunger and thirst after righteousness. People who are searching the scriptures will find these things out, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs, fellow heirs and of the same body. I mean, what a complete shock that would have been. Who would have put their money down on this, that the house of Israel cast off seven centuries earlier, who from their very beginnings spurned the law of God, no sooner had they set up a kingdom under Jeroboam that they turned immediately to calf worship. They forsook the Lord to the fullest possible extent. They knew what they should have done and then they deliberately did the opposite. Who would have guessed that the Lord would have brought them back in? Well, with the Holy Spirit outpouring, understanding of what the prophets had declared became revealed unto Paul and to the other apostles of the day that God was bringing them back in exactly as prophesied in the Old Testament time and time again. The Gentiles, the low ME, the people who were once not beloved, who were without hope, Aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, without God, without hope in this world, were now being brought back into the commonwealth of Israel. Who would have guessed it? Great mystery. And it's a mystery that has been made known. It's a mystery that you can understand, brothers and sisters, if you open your mind up, if you... Pray unto the Lord and ask the Lord to reveal these things unto you. And when you see it for yourself, it won't be because you heard it here. It will be because the Spirit has opened up your eyes to see it. And you will know it's true because the Scriptures will become alive to you. Bless the Lord. In Romans 9 verse 30 it says, What shall we say then that the Gentiles, which follow not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith, but Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, have not attained to the law of righteousness. Now it's quite appropriate that I comment upon this scripture. We've just read that in the prior verses, the Jews were contrasted with the Gentiles. Now we read in Romans 9 verses 30 and 31. And we'll go on later and read in Romans chapter 10 and 11 that Israel is being contrasted with the Gentiles. So how can we hold the view that the Gentiles are the lost sheep of the house of Israel, if now we've got in verses 30 and 31 that the Gentiles are being contrasted with Israel, does, does everything that we have just said fall apart? Does it all just go up in smoke because what Paul has gone on and said is that there are Gentiles and that there are Israelites, whereas I have just laboured the point to show the difference between the Jews and the Gentiles and that the difference is between the Jews and the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Does this all fall apart now? Well, I just want to explain this in its context. We read again in Romans 9 verse 30, What shall we say then that the Gentiles which follow not after righteousness have obtained righteousness? even the righteousness which is of faith. Well, we don't have to throw away everything which we've just learned. The descendants of the northern Israel nation have already been identified as the Gentiles in the preceding verses. We've gone on and we have identified already that these Gentiles are the low ME people of Hosea chapter 1, that they are the people that were once not beloved. It is they, the house of Israel, 
from the time that their nation was first established who made no attempt whatsoever to follow after the righteousness of God. The fact of the matter is, they were decadent from their very beginning. It was they who were divorced. It was they who were cast off. It was they who were scattered among the Gentiles. It is they who became as the Gentiles. Remember, the Jews queried, will Jesus go to the first among the Gentiles to teach the Gentiles? So Romans chapter 9, verse 30 is still talking about these same people, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, Israel in dispersion. They were the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness. Now, if you don't believe it, please go back and read the history of the house of Israel because this is the history of the house of Israel. They made no attempt whatsoever to follow after the righteousness of God. We've just seen that Romans 9 verse 30 in referring to the Gentiles is still a reference to the, to the house of Israel in dispersion. In verse 31 it says now, But Israel which followed after the law of righteousness hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Now this reference to Israel here cannot be a reference to the house of Israel, the kingdom of Israel itself, because it never followed after the law back and read the scriptures. No sooner had they set themselves up as a they immediately cast off the law of God and served calves and idols and after all the abominations of the heathen nations around about them. This reference to Israel here, which followed after the law of righteousness, can only be a reference to the Judah nation. And the fact of the matter is, our Bibles show us clearly that they went out of their way to follow after the law of righteousness. Such, they went so far to follow the law of righteousness that it just became a whole religion of works. And when the Messiah came on the scene, the Lord Jesus Christ, they rejected him. But we've got more about that. To, we'll say a lot more about that in subsequent presentations on Romans 10 and 11. But note this. The Israel referred to here is a reference to the Judah nation. And because the Judah nation was still in marital relationship with the Lord, they could rightly be called Israel. Not because they deserved it, but because the Lord was continuing to work with them. Notwithstanding this, their time as Israel, their time in marital relationship with the Lord, was fast running out. Because these guys, the Jews... They were rejecting Jesus Christ time and time again and now they were rejecting the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ being preached by uh, the apostles and uh, a, a strong warning is going out uh, to the Judah nation. But the contrast in Romans 9 verse 30 and Romans 9 verse 31 is still a contrast between Judah and the Gentiles, between Israel that is, the Judah nation still in marital relationship with the Lord, and the Gentiles being, it, being the house of Israel, cast off, with having lost the Israel name, being designated as Loami, a people who were not shown mercy, a people who were not beloved, but were now being brought back into the fold, as, as prophesied in, by the mouth of the prophets in the Old Testament and even by the Lord Jesus Christ who, himself who said other sheep I have not of this fold them I must bring in and they will hear my voice now we've got much more to say on this in future presentations uh, but we'll leave it there as we conclude Romans chapter 9 Let's remember, the northern kingdom of Israel was divorced, dispersed among the Gentiles. They had become as the Gentiles. They were a nation that was not called by my name. They were called not a people and not beloved. 
they had lost their marital name Israel. The southern kingdom of Judah had not been divorced and accordingly they were still in marital relationship with the Lord even at the time Paul is writing in Romans chapter 9. It is very clear that the Judah nation had to be in marital relationship with the Lord so that Jesus, when he was born at Bethlehem, was not born out of wedlock. Despite the fact that the spiritual condition of Judah was terminal, they had spiritual cancer or leprosy from their, their toe to their, their, the top of their head, they were still... Despite that, they were still legally married to the Lord. They were still legally Israel. Accordingly, the Judah nation could be called Israel because they still maintain the marital relationship with the Lord God. As it says in Hosea 11 verse 12, Ephraim compassed me about with lies, that is the house of Israel, but Judah yet rules with God. Now Judah was yet ruling with God not because they deserved it. The fact of the matter is uh, in many instances they were much worse than the house of Israel. Nevertheless, they still maintained relation, marital relationship with the Lord God Almighty because God was dealing with the two houses separately. That being said, however, as we go on and we read Paul's writings, including as we go on in Romans chapter 10 and 11 in the future, the time for Judah as Israel was fast running out. Unless these Jews responded to the gospel, unless they repented of their sins and obeyed the gospel, they were going to be rejected. They were going to be cut off cut off. And the fact of the matter is, of course, that's what happened in AD 70. This brings me to the close of Romans chapter 9. I hope that this has been helpful to you. I hope that you have learned things from the Bible. It's certainly been a real learning curve for me. It's been very helpful, helpful to me. It's opened up my understanding concerning the word of God immensely. We've got a lot more things to say in future presentations. If this is of interest to you, the things that we've been saying in Romans chapter 9, well, it only gets better. And as future presentations are made available, I hope and pray that you will take advantage of those and listen with an inquiry, inquiring ear. Have your, your spiritual mind open to receive new things. God bless you for listening. And may the Lord continue to open his word unto you as you seek to know him and his ways. Amen.